What's up, Husker Nation? This is Jake Peters, a Nebraska offensive line commit, and this is the Boys Down Bad podcast. All right, this is the Boys Down Bad podcast, and we are pumped to welcome on another Nebraska football recruit, Jake Peters, to the pod. Jake, welcome on, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. You bet. Thanks so much for coming on. Um, you got to tell us what has life been like uh, since you committed to be a Husker? It's just been super great. I mean, even when I got the offer to committing, just so many fans commenting on my posts, following me. I just can feel the Nebraska love from the fans. It's just something I've never seen before. It's awesome. 100%. That was my next question. You know, what is the experience with uh, Husker Nation been like so far? Yeah, I've, I've had nothing but great experiences. They're just great fans and super polite people, but they're diehard Nebraska fans and they'll do anything for their team. Absolutely. Have you had any, uh, like, run-ins with fans in the wild that uh, kind of picked you up and noticed you? We talked to a lot of recruits, and that's always the craziest stories are when they're on planes or something, they see them, and they just know who they are before they even committed or anything. Yeah, I I I live in Iowa, and there's some Nebraska fans here who just notice me and say what's up or grab a picture. Or uh, I was going out to eat on my official visit, and there were some Nebraska fans there noticed that the recruits were there, and they all just started cheering. It's just a crazy atmosphere. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's one of the best parts about being a Husker is uh, Husker Nation. So mm-hmm. super happy to have you, man. Um, so growing up. You know, was this always your dream? Did you want to play college football or did it kind of come later on in your life? Yeah, college football has always been a big dream of mine. My dad played at the University of South Dakota, played defensive tackle there. And so that's always been a big dream of mine is to follow in his footsteps and play college football. Yeah. So what would you say your favorite part of football is? And then what would you say is probably like the hardest part of football? Oh, I think my favorite part of football is just being with the team. That's, I mean, it's a team sport unlike any other where every person on the field has to do their job or else it doesn't work. Um, The bus rides, the football games, the bus rides home. I mean, I I love playing football as well, but those, that's just the best part. And then I think the hardest part of football is kind of also with the team aspect of it. Every single person has to do their job. So the team has to be super cohesive and just be together the whole time or else it's just not going to be a very good football team. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's no secret that uh, Nebraska and Iowa, we don't have the best relationship. <laughs> um, but you definitely picked the right place. What was high school football or what is it like um, in Iowa? What's your experience been like? Um, I just know that our offense and defensive linemen are super good here. I think we have some pretty high level line play here. Um, and so that's been super helpful to play against one of the better lines, I think. And just the uh, strength that people have here. I'm sure that's the same way in Nebraska. Just that farm kid strength uh, is like none other. <laughs> For sure. When you get here, you're going to have to tell us who has the better corn and uh, All right. settle that argument. <laughs> so I was looking on rivals and you had a lot of interest from like military schools as well as like Ivy League schools. So like what was like the biggest difference between those two, I guess, like recruiting pitches and then even just like to like the power five level as well? Yeah, I think for the Ivy League and the military schools, their pitches were just about their academics because their academics are such a big deal there and they're super high level. And a degree from one of those schools means a ton in the workforce. And so that was a pretty big honor to get recruited by those people for them to see my hard work in the classroom. And then from the Power Five level, they obviously have the better football program. And so that was a lot cooler to see just how much they value their football program at Nebraska. And, but they also value academics as well. I think that was one of the biggest parts of their uh, official visit was showing us how important academics is to them. So that made me feel really at home just because of how important they take academics as well as football. Yeah, 100%. That's a good transition. Um, can you take us through the story of how you eventually got to be a Husker? Yeah, so my recruiting process kind of started a little later than most. My sophomore year, I was pulled up to varsity. But I was injured for most of the year, and so I only played, like, a few games into the season. And so then into my junior year is when I started to get some more notice. Uh, the summer before my junior year, I went to some camps and started to get some notice from colleges. But really, once I started my junior year and started putting my film out, I think college coaches started to get on notice a little bit. 
And that was probably through the fall. But I'd say in the spring is when it really kicked up a lot for me. Um, in February, I started going on a bunch of junior days uh, to some FBS programs. And then they started offering me there. Um, and then some some of the bigger colleges around Iowa started reaching out to me as well. So I started going on visits to them. Uh, I just thought it was a really cool opportunity to see all the different programs around the Midwest. That was super fun meeting all the coaches and the players and just seeing different programs. So how did you get, uh, how did your offer process go, I guess, with Nebraska? Yeah, Nebraska was actually pretty quick. So I really didn't come in contact with Nebraska until like the last week in May. Uh, Coach Keith Williams called me and told me that they'd love to have me at camp. They saw my film. Uh, one of the biggest things that spoke to me is he said that I'm their kind of people and then they're my kind of people. And so when he kind of said that, I was for sure locked in to go to their camp. Uh, went to the camp, uh, did pretty well, loved Coach Rayola working with him for the whole day. Um, and they thought I performed pretty well and then gave me a scholarship offer that day. Um, the reason I didn't commit it that day is just because that was my first day on campus. I just didn't know much about Nebraska at that time. So I really just wanted to go on an official visit, and I did that next week. And I think it was the first day we had a little break, and I go to my parents when we had some alone time, and I said, I think we're really going to do this thing. It is just awesome here. The atmosphere in Lincoln is just like none other. The town, the college, it's just all awesome. Um, so we hear a lot of guys talk about like rule and how, like, once you talk to him, you're just like all the way bought in. What does he really talk about in those like recruiting visits or even just like, uh, uh, at like a camp to like get guys bought in like immediately? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for him is giving your all. I mean, you can even see some of the stuff they post on Twitter. He's just always encouraging his guys to give a hundred percent. And that's what he was saying even during camp. And when I was talking to him. He just wants me to be the best high school player I can possibly be. And at that camp, he wanted me to do the best I possibly could. He's just all, all an all-in type of guy. Yeah, I love that. That's what a lot of the other guys say, too. Um, so are there any certain guys, whether they're on the team or maybe in your same class or being recruited, that you've really bonded with and you think are uh, are pretty cool guys and that can make a difference? Yeah, one guy on my high school team is Drew Campbell. He's committed to the University of Iowa right now. He's a defensive end. And so I play tackle at my high school, so we battle day in, day out. And that's gotten us both a ton better. Uh, we just respect each other a lot, and we've also grown as great friends throughout these three years, competing against each other every single day. So that's been a super fun privilege to be able to go against him. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, it's good to have a guy like that. Uh, what yeah. are you most excited for coming to Nebraska and being a Husker? Um, I'm excited to get a new experience. I think walking out onto the uh, Nebraska field for the first time with all those fans, uh, that's going to be super cool. I haven't even been to a game yet, so I'm really looking forward to that first Husker game, uh, September 16th, so that'll be fun. But, yeah, I'm just looking forward to get getting coached under Coach Rayola and being around those guys. They just are so smart when it comes to the game of football, and they're also great men. So that I can't wait to be around those people. Absolutely. Yeah. You're in for a treat. Husker games. They're unlike any other. Yeah. Yeah. Is there one thing you're working on like right now that you think is really going to carry over once you get to Nebraska? Yeah. I'm just trying to be the best high school player I can possibly be. Coach Rule told me to do that. And so day in and day out and practice every single rep, I'm just taking it one rep at a time, one day at a time, just trying to work my hardest. And I think that's a strong suit of mine is just working super hard and I'll work out, outwork anybody. Absolutely. Nice. That's a good answer. Chris, you got it? Yeah. Um, talking about Coach Rule, so wherever he's been, he's kind of – he's known for finding diamonds in the rough, kind of like you, where, you know, they weren't offered a lot from Power 5 schools, but yet he makes them into great players. Does that kind of give you motivation? Like, you know, Iowa, Iowa State, you know, didn't come at you super hard, and then Nebraska comes in, offers you – does that give you some extra motivation that kind of chip on your shoulder? Yeah, for sure. That chip on my shoulder is – for as soon as I committed – I had a chip on my shoulder to get going just because I knew those schools overlooked me and now I'm ready to get back at them and work, prove them wrong when I'm at Nebraska. Yeah. I yeah, love that answer. Love that. Fires me up. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Boys, you got anything else? That's all I got. Uh, talk a little bit about Donovan Rayola. Um, I've been to a couple practices this spring and fall and he's pretty hard on those offensive linemen. Um, 
What do you think about that coaching style, and how does that make an offensive lineman better when your coach is just constantly pushing you to be better and better? Yeah, I kind of have that coaching style right now as a high school player. My high school coach is that way, um, and I love that coaching style. Just always on you to to have a super high expectation, and if you, you don't meet that, then you're going to get yelled at or you're going to be told to meet that expectation, and I really love that. Uh, when I was on my official visit, I was actually at, they had a camp that day, and so I was watching a bit of the camp, and my player host, Ethan Piper, was there. And I asked him what he thought of Coach Donovan Rayola, and he said he's like a father to me. And so <laughs> when he said that, that was pretty cool to just see that Coach Rayola is another father to him. He's a father figure, and when I heard that, that made me super comfortable to know that Coach Rayola is going to be there for me. And just getting to know him over this whole summer, I can totally see that, and I'm excited to work with him. You bet. That's exciting. I love it. Um, all right, one more question for you. Um, a chance to pump up Husker Nation a little bit. What kind of guy is Husker Nation getting in Jake Peters? Uh, well, I'm not the super flashy guy. Um, some of my coaches just call me a lunch pail guy. Uh, both my grandparents are farmers, but I'm a guy who's just going to get in there and work as hard as I can, and nobody's going to tell me that I can't work as hard as I possibly can, and I'm not going to stop. So I can't wait to get to Nebraska and get to work. We love we yeah. love lunch pail guys. Yeah, that's absolutely. awesome. <laughs> Put the head down and work, baby. You bet. Yeah, let's do it. Jake, thank you so much for coming on, man. We really appreciate it. Um, and we yeah. can't wait to see you uh, play for the Scurs, baby. It's going to be great. Yeah, I really appreciate you guys having me on. Thank you so much. Absolutely, Absolutely. man. We'll see you Go later. Big Go Big Red. Go Big Red. <laughs> All right. This is the Boys Down Bad podcast. We're back another week. And, boys, it's game week. Yep, releasing the pod early on Thursday because we got a big game tonight. Scurs, Minnesota. Chris is going to be there. Yep. How are the vibes, boys? Hi. Good I vibes. My my vibes turned into nervous vibes. Still high, but I'm just I just have the first game jitters. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, I don't know. After seeing the depth chart, I wasn't excited. I depth wasn't. Chart. It didn't like make my initial reaction like for the season go up what did you not agree with or something that turned you off uh, there's one wide point. receiver position is a That's big fine. question mark how are we gonna who are we gonna throw the ball to i couldn't i don't know who any of those guys are besides people, marcus washington but he's people hurt. are big on igc this year but is it I bullock mean, bullock, bullock. Bullock. People say Bullock is the best good route, route runner, runner, but he was a walk on from prep. Yeah, but you don't know in a game like who knows. I mean, if he's starting, then he must have had a good camp. Yeah, he's clearly good if he's starting. Yeah, over Marcus Washington. Or how bad are the other guys? I don't. I don't think. I think Rule would play freshman if he needed to. Yeah, I was I wondering why plays. we didn't have any. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Which like, but why we didn't have any of our speedsters like even on the death chart. chart yeah malachi wasn't listed jalen lloyd wasn't li- like smokescreen bryce turner yeah nobody Smoke was screen. listed so i don't know there was really no other surprises really workature over fedoni yeah so that's that, a little weird so it wasn't one two for tight ends it had or yeah fedoni. so what does the or mean i think it's just that they'll both play yeah like they're both like ones like so there's they're not interchangeable. Like, yeah. So it's not like Fedoni's the tight end too. Yeah. I, yeah. That means I think that our, our kicker is an or, I think. Yeah, I think it'll Which be Alvano. I don't like that. I think it's Alvano. <clears throat> it's got to be Alvano. It, I would hope. Yeah, you hope. But we'll see. Exciting. Football's back officially. Football was back last week, but because the boys in bad probably were going to – that one didn't count. That's yeah, week, week zero. Okay. I think if you're going to do week zero, there needs to be one game you can count on being good. Because there were there was nothing. <clears throat> like Army Na- or Notre Dame Navy was supposed to be like that was supposed to be the premier game. Yeah. And it was horrible. Yeah, it was bad. Like even if very it's not bad. like a it's very bad. <laughs> even if it's not like two <laughs> big name teams, give me two teams that are on an equal playing field. Like, give me Florida State LSU last week, or North Carolina South Carolina. Yeah, like give me a 
we need one game that we can count on being good or at least two good teams. And if it's a blowout, at least we saw like Notre Dame's going to be, I think, good. But also Navy looked horrible. Yeah. I don't know. I, it's just such why a do we tease. even have week zero? Why not just start it all on the first week? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. And just I move mean, that week one up a week. Yeah. So start football earlier, but start with good games. Yeah. I mean, Nebraska was the only good game last week or last year for week zero. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think we just do away with week zero. Or, like you said, have a, one or two, like, decent games. Yeah. Because, like, games are going to matter. Nebraska and Northwestern, it's a conference game. Yeah. They're, we thought they were going to be two teams that were on a very somewhat even playing field. Like, obviously, neither team's season went how they wanted it to. But it was two teams that you kind of figured they were going to be around, like, the middle to bottom of the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. So, it was, like, a still a competitive game but you just had an absolute ass-kicking. Yeah. Just... I agree. I agree. But it's game week. It's exciting. We've waited a long time for this. I I was eating dinner on Saturday, and I just turned to the people I was eating dinner with and said, I'm nervous. And they're like, about what? The game. I think a lot of people, it's just a bunch of question marks. See, so we like, have no idea. What, what's going to happen? Like, how's the team going to look? How's rules system going to look? No one knows. No one knows. You'll be there, though. I will be there. Bringing the vibes. Going to try to bring the vibes. No. See, he's already See, doing Yeah, he's doing that stupid crap. Don't try. You're going to the first game. You have to bring the vibes. I mean, when I get in the stadium, the vibes will be high. Yeah, vibes or is, l- is it going to be like one bad drive and you're like, oh, yeah, I, I knew it. We're going to get a the vibes no. low. Nebraska goes three and out. Minnesota scores, and we're going to get a message. Oh, yep, told you. Told you. We suck. No, like, I'll probably wait till at least half. See, he's already thinking about yeah, when he's going to send yeah. the message saying No, that I'm suck. saying like I'll, I'll wait until half to make a judgment like of how, how I think it's going to go. Because one drive is one drive, but if it like continues for a whole half then it's concerning we need we need good vibes going in just wait until the end of the game if we lose then send it because yeah you're gonna send it at halftime and then rule we're gonna find out rule is like a second half this team's a second half team and we're gonna come back can you freaking fix that i don't know why it just keeps sliding twist it. i i did it's tight and it just keeps sliding i don't know why you put it over there just put it on the side. It's, it's really pissing me off. Because then it doesn't get close turn, enough. Can you turn it? What do you mean? Turn the, turn the mic. Close. Yeah. This way? Yeah. Like this? Yeah. Sure. Or make it go on top. There. That's fine. That's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So we need positive vibes. All and right. Good story. Yep. All right. No questions about it. I'll work on it. Gosh, I would. When Thursday comes, I'll be I'll be ready. Okay, good. That's all. We, that's what we need. Yeah, I'll be ready by Thursday. I've given up on like trying to get other people. Like, no, yeah, it's either you're in or you're not. Season. I don't even need you to be like all the like all in like how in we are. I'll I just never want you be to that way this year. I just want you to like you don't care right now. Yeah, you don't care. I care. No, no. But you don't care. That was you. Do, you hesitated. You I do care. not care. He doesn't care if we go six and six, if we go three and nine. Six and six would be amazing. I'd be yeah, really happy with six and six. You wouldn't care if it goes the other way though. If we start losing. You're I mean, not you're gonna be like, Oh, I told you. Because I expected it. That's why I'm not getting my hopes up. But then you What's the point then? All year. Because then I can be super happy when we're four and oh. And that we're eight and four at the end of the year and it's amazing season. No. But then you could have been happy all summer, true, and all fall, could have, and all bowl season. But then yeah. if we're three and nine, and At I was happy all summer, then it's like, wow, that was a huge yeah, but down. But then you had the summer to be you happy. Had, yeah, you had more time to be happy. You it's had just, hopeful. It's just more letdown. No, it's not. Yes, it no. is. More, I mean, it is more, more letdown, but that should be the point of being a fan. I'd rather be happy as the season goes on. 
then be super happy at the beginning, and then we suck, and That's then just the vibes f- just tank. It's just if you were a fan, if this was about any other team, we would say Chris is just being a fair weather fan. But True. since it's Nebraska, if you say that, it's just just being realistic fan. Realistic. Okay, we're moving on. We've got a lot of picks to get to today. First week of picks, is, so we're gonna do our win totals over under. We're gonna do. We're each gonna give three locks of the week, and at the end of the year, the percent whoever has the worst percentage has to do a punishment. Yeah, so of the three locks. So we'll be keeping track. Peers will be keeping track, and then we're gonna do the parlay. So we've got a lot to get to. Do we have well, punishment it, for the win totals? I had I had a thought. I don't know if people will be on board. Okay, let's hear it. You have to either shave or buzz your head. I'm out. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> this is why we can't even do punishments. That's just I mean, a little too extreme. Why? Why? Because you just bu- get a buzz, buzz cut. Are, buzz cuts are kind of coming back in. You actually. just get a buzz cut. You don't have to go bald. It's just, an, just a buzz cut. Yeah. I'm out on that. Okay, I guess we'll think of one then. Why? Your hair's not long right now. Like it really wouldn't be that much of a difference. It would hurt me more. I uh, yeah I I can't. It would hurt Dylan or Trevin a lot. Yeah, I can't. I'll Why? explain. What's... I'll explain later. What do you mean? <laughs> it's a punishment. No, I don't can't. lose. <laughs> I can't do it. Okay. Can't do that. Okay, whatever. We'll do. We'll we'll figure something out. We'll figure something out. All right. I would have been on board. Been yeah, I thought that was like a. Yeah, it's. I mean, oh, it's. It's not a. It's bad one where like you fun. you have to go out and people are like, oh, what happened to you? And if say I lost, I my, lost the punish. Yeah. I lost the bet. But it's not like egregious to where they're like, Jesus Christ, you know? Yeah. It's not like a tattoo. Yeah. Who would make a tattoo bet? Yeah. All of us. Those people are idiots. <laughs> <to do> that. <laughs> okay, let's start with our over unders. Season win total. Chris, you want to start us? Yeah, I can start. Um, so I'm going to start with my over. I'm going to go with Wisconsin. Over eight and a half wins. I think Wisconsin is going to be really good, plus the Big Ten West is fairly easy compared to the Big Ten East. Um, pretty much all they have to deal with is Iowa. Suppose I mean, if you go off preseason stuff, all they have to beat is Iowa. And, and Nebraska. They sh- uh, yeah, whatever. Sure. But <laughs> – I mean, if they run through the Big Ten West, that's five wins already. They only need four more. They got transfer quarterback Tanner Mordecai, who is a stud at SMU, throws the ball all over the yard. They're switching up their offense for him. And Luke Fickle is, I think, one of the top coaches. So it was a good hire for them. I think their schedule sets up pretty well for nine wins. Um, So I'm going to go Wisconsin over eight and a half. Good one. Should we just should we do all overs or are we gonna over unders at the same time? Uh I can go under too. Yeah. Um so my under is gonna be Oklahoma State under six and a half wins. So I have a source that <laughs> Mike Gundy could be on the way out. He's not keeping up with like the transfer portal, recruiting has gone downhill, and he's not totally bought into like NIL. <laughs> So they're what? Their talent pool is lower. They have I love a brand how new we claim that we have sources. We do have source. But <laughs> I know exactly who that source is. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they have a brand new quarterback. I think he's gonna be I think he's a redshirt freshman, maybe a sophomore, but hasn't played much college football. I think he played in their bowl game last year and did not look good. Um their schedule is it's not easy, but it's not difficult. Like, all their hard games are at home, but they're still, I mean, they're st- still difficult. Um, I just don't think they're going to be that good. Good one. I like those. Those are both good picks. Thank you. We'll see what happens. Me or you? Uh, you can go. All right, so my over, I'm running it back with Texas, over nine and a half. So get on that now. This is a team yeah. – that like Texas back is always the joke. This team is going to be favored in at least 11 out of the 12 games they play. The only game they're not is Alabama. Yeah. Which that's going to be 
a closer spread than we think. Yeah. Yeah. I think they should have beat them last year. They have, yeah. it's kind of split with their like hard games, road and home, but they get, I mean, like you're playing Oklahoma at a neutral site. That helps. You don't have to go like to Oklahoma. The quarterback room is super deep. So if Quinn Ewers does get hurt, Malik Murphy's there, Arch Manning's there if you really need him. Everything else they're super deep with running backs, wide receivers. Talent is not the issue on the team. It's just winning the all the games you should. I get nine and a half high for a team that like typically is gonna lose two games that they probably should win each year. So like that means they have to be perfect other than that and they have to go to Tuscaloosa, which is tough. But I mean if they beat Alabama, like I don't think there's a I think it's pretty likely that they could beat Alabama. We don't know who's going to be their quarterback. Um, they're also only – if you're going to take a flyer on a team to make the college football playoff, you're going to get decent value with Texas. At, I think it's plus 300. Probably going to win that conference. So that's my over, 9.5. My under is Colorado. <laughs> I went through their schedule, and I can only mark down one for sure win. <laughs> so, really? Yeah. Their, their schedule's hard. They go to TCU – they have Nebraska at home. Colorado State is their, I would say, their one for sure win. Yeah. At Oregon, USC, Arizona State, you probably win that. You could probably probably split that and Stanford, so that gets you to two. And then Arizona. Maybe. Do they play UCLA, too? They play at UCLA. Yeah, like, they get Oregon State at home. They have to go to Utah. So, like, their schedule sets up. And, like. And they have to get to four. Yeah. Yeah. So, like. Yeah. You can count one for sure win, and then they have three toss-ups. So, like, yeah. they'd have to win all their toss-up games. If you lose one of those, you have to upset somebody, and you have to go to a lot of those places. Like, you go to Eugene, you're going to TCU. I mean, you have to go to UCLA at Washington State, which, like, we don't know what that's going to look mm-hmm. like. Depth is another thing I worry about with Colorado. Like, after Shador Sanders, what's their backup situation like? Yep. I think it's a true freshman. They have no depth with like all the turnover they've had. Yeah, they have, like no depth. I think, and they're small. Yeah, like that's, all the videos they posted on Twitter. If it's not Travis Hunter, it's a guy that could be playing intramurals, or he yeah. could be playing JV high school football. Yeah, yeah like true. their and their defensive backs are super small. Yeah, so like yeah, Travis Hunter looks great in all those videos, but look at the guys he's going against. They're five foot nothing. I also think the Pac-12 is definitely the most interesting conference this year. Like, even if, say, they can pick off, like, a UCLA, like, you still have to beat Utah. You still play USC, Oregon. It's just not a conference where, like, those teams that you always put at the top, like, none of them are really at a down year this year, Mm -hmm. which, I mean, that's that sets up pretty tough when you're playing a lot of really good quarterbacks. Yeah. And you have, I mean, can you name more than two guys on Colorado? No. No. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think most of the country probably could. No. I don't know if some of Colorado fans might not even probably know not. five players. Yeah, probably not. So Texas like over that. nine and a half, Colorado under three and a half. I like both of those. Those are good. Um, my over is going to be Oregon over nine and a half. Bo Nix coming back. Um, I think Oregon is going to be really good this year. I feel like Bo Nix has been in college football for 15 years. Um, A lot of experience. He struggled at the beginning of last year, but kind of figured it out towards the end. A lot of experience there. Schedule is eh. I think they they play Florida State this year. Um, Washington, Oregon State, and USC. So, I think they could win two of those. The other ones they should be able to win. So yeah. I think they'll get to 10. Um, so that's my over pick. My under is going to be Florida under five and a half. The only thing I wrote down was Graham Mertz is bad. And he's going to be even worse in the SEC. Yeah. Guaranteed. Fair. Yeah. That was so. a very interesting transfer for Graham Mertz. It, I mean, I don't think Florida has anything behind him. That's why he went there. He's yeah. Like, yeah they don't have any other options so I can go there and start. Yeah. I mean, and he's not good. No. No. He's going to be bad. They're going to be terrible. He struggled in the Big 10. And pff, SEC is a different They animal. they have someone good this week, don't they? Utah. Utah, Utah yeah. Thursday At night. Utah. Yeah, they're going to get smoked. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, that's my under Florida under five and a half, Oregon over nine and a half. I like both of those too. Let's throw it to Trev for his over under picks. All right, for my college football win total over, I'm going SMU over eight and a half wins. Absolutely love the Mustangs this year. Um, they had the 14th best transfer class this season, which is just insane for a school of their size. The NIL money hit hard at SMU this year. They're going to be a team not to mess with. They lost Tanner Mordecai, but they got a dude in Preston Stone ready to take over. If you don't know the name, get to know him. Um, very easy schedule once they get to conference play. They're just going to roll over eight and a half wins is easy. For my under, I'm taking Eastern Carolina under five and a half. Um, they were a pretty solid team last year, but they lost absolutely everybody, whether graduating or to the transfer portal, and their schedule is brutal. I think they had the 128th, ranked 128th in returning production. Not a good number. I think they're really going to struggle starting out at Michigan. Ugh. Under five and a half Eastern Carolina. Book it. All right, good over unders, boys. Let's move into the three locks of the week. Again, we are each picking three games every week, and whoever has the worst percentage at the end of the year has to do some sort of punishment. We don't know yet. It won't be shaving our heads. That Heinous. one was shot down. Heinous. <laughs> Heinous. Chris, would you like to start us? Yeah, I can go. Uh, my first one is going to be Tennessee minus 27.5 against Virginia. Ooh. Now, people are going to say, wow, that's a big number for week one. But Tennessee had a really good year last year. Um, Joe Milton is their quarterback. Heard he's looked really good in camp. Their offense is electric. I think their defense will be better. But this is more against Virginia. I think Virginia lost a ton of players. I think they're going to be really bad. I think their over under win totals like three and a half also. And it's at Tennessee. So I think Tennessee will score a ton of points, be able to beat Virginia pretty handily. My second one, Fresno State plus four and a half against Purdue. Purdue coach left for Louisville, and O'Connell's finally gone at quarterback, so they have a new mm -hmm. quarterback. Um, Fresno's a team that people don't really know about because they're in, like, a smaller conference, but they're always good, and people, they just, like, sneak up on good teams or, like, power five teams. Yeah. So I'll take the plus four and a half with them. And then my last one, LSU minus two and a half against Florida State. <sighs> yes. Um yeah. I know LSU Same. has a defensive player out. Same. Yeah. What, you guys have Florida State or something? Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Huge. I think LSU didn't lose a whole lot. Um, I think Daniels is still their quarterback. Um, they kind of surprised people with how good they were last year. I think they're going to be even better this year. Um, Brian Kelly is a good coach too. So I'm going to go with LSU minus two and a half. Okay. Good picks. Jordan, you're up. Yeah, so I'm going to start it out with Colorado TCU under 64. It's another one where TCU starting over at quarterback. I don't know who their guy is. Now they lose Max Duggan. They also lost, I think, their best wide receiver. So that's going to be a whole new And they're running back. Yeah, I think that's a really high number for like first, first year starting quarterback for TCU. Also, you're running into a guy who came from – G5 school in Shador Sanders. Just think that's a really high number for week one. Haven't really seen either of them play. Haven't seen either of them play. Um, then I'm going to go with North Carolina minus two against South Carolina. That's one where I'm just taking the more experienced and I think the better quarterback in Drake May over Spencer Rattler. You're getting at less than a field goal. I think you could probably see, I think it's going to be, I could see this being a blowout. I just think Drake May is that good. And then I'm going to take Florida State plus the two and a half. Jordan Travis, Heisman. And it's in Florida. Uh, and I just, I don't know. I think LSU is not going to be as good as people think this year. I think that obviously Jaden Daniels is still a good quarterback. But I think we're going to see some of that Arizona State a little bit more this year. Team's going to be a little bit more ready for it. So, I'm going to take the Florida State plus the two and a half. 
Love that. State's overrated this year. Love that. Three great picks. Um, my three college football locks for week one. First, we're going Michigan, East Carolina over 51 and a half. I think Michigan is going to be insane this year. Blake Corum and JJ McCarthy coming back. I've heard they have one of the best lines in the nation. Um, I think they might put up close to 51 by themselves. East Carolina just needs a touchdown or two, and we'll hit that one. My second is going to be TCU minus 20 and a half against Colorado. Just comes down to I think Colorado is going to be bad. I know TCU has a lot of turnover um, this year with Max leaving, um, but I just think Colorado is bad. They don't have any depth. And then my third pick is going to be Florida State plus two and a half against LSU. Game's in Florida. Um, LSU suspended Mason Smith. He's a stud defensive line dude. Um, Jordan Travis coming back. Um, Throw a flyer on Florida State to make the playoff. I don't know what the odds are, but I think they're going to be really good this year. Pretty easy schedule. They do need to treat this game like a playoff game, though. Like this yeah. is a this is a statement game for both teams. But I think Florida State gets it done. And those are my three locks. I also think it's a game Norvell just lets Jordan Travis plays, even if they're a big. Mm-hmm. Get him, get him way out ahead of the Heisman. I like them to make the playoff as well. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Did you hear LSU tried to schedule a week zero game this year so they could suspend their player for that game and have him back for Florida State? That doesn't surprise me. Well, why wouldn't you? <laughs> I don't think you can schedule that games that, games that quick. When did they try to do it? I just saw something on on three during like the off season, mm, probably like a couple weeks ago. Late yeah. off season, they tried to get a week zero game. I don't know. Doesn't he got suspended me. and the line didn't move. That tells you something. Doesn't matter. Just saying. Okay, let's throw it to Trev for his picks. What up, boys down bad nation? It's Trev coming at you with three college football locks for week one. First up, we're rolling with Boise State, plus 14 and a half at Washington. Yeah, I get it. A lot of hype about Washington. Michael Penix, blah, blah, blah. I don't buy it. Give me the Broncos plus the points. They're a good team. Way too many points. They'll cover it easily. Maybe sprinkle some money line. Next up, we're going with my guys over at UTSA. It's a pick 'em over Houston. Uh, UTSA, many of you know, absolutely love them. They're going to be so good this year. Frank Harris returning again, elite offense. They lost in triple overtime to Houston last year. I think they're going to have vengeance on their mind. Houston lost Clayton Toon, Tank Dell. Give me UTSA, the fighting nut sacks. And lastly, we're going Coastal Carolina. Plus 14 and a half at UCLA. Similar as a Boise State line. Just a good team catching way too many points. Coastal Carolina. I don't know if you've heard of Grayson McCall. Still there. Most efficient passer in NCAA history. 70 plus percent in his career. Give me the points at UCLA. That's easy. All right. Good picks, boys. We might have a little bit of explaining to do this week. Yeah, boys, we got we to gotta be better. The boys down bad parlay week zero went one for five. Um, we had a lot of riders on TikTok, had a lot of haters. The haters won this time. Yeah. We'll tip our hats. We get it. It wasn't our best, but it was week zero. It's not a real number. We're just warming up. It's not a real game. They yeah. weren't real games. No. I'd rather get the losses out now. Yeah. The get, the first game we lost was on foreign soil. Yeah. It doesn't count. Yeah. So week one, we're starting off hot. Week one with the boys down by parlay. Chris, what is your pick? All right, I'm going to probably the gro- one of the grossest games of week one. Uh, Big Ten, Sunday. It's on a Sunday. Northwestern and Rutgers under 40 and a half points. Ugh, yuck. It's gross. gross. Yeah, it's not a lot of points, but look at the two teams that are playing. Northwestern, one win last year. We all know what happened to them in the offseason. New coach, they're basically in turmoil. They're basically in jail. So yep, yep, yep. I think they're going to be bad. Rutgers traditionally doesn't score a lot of points. Shiano usually is a defensive-minded guy. So I think they'll run the ball. Both teams will try and run the ball, play good defense. Not a lot of points. So under 40.5 in that game. I like that. Peters, what do you got? 
Yeah, I'm going to go to Texas team total over 47 and a half. I think this is a game where Ewers is going to be out early, but the QB2 battle is very interesting with Malik Murphy and Arch Manning to where I don't think like Malik Murphy is going to come in and just like hand the ball off for 10 minutes of the game. I think you're going to see both. I think Sark wants to get live reps for both of these guys to see who the best option is if Quinn Ewers does get hurt. So I think it's more of a, yeah, you're going to see Quinn Ewers out early, but it's more of a QB2 battle than it is a QB1 battle. So I'm going to take Texas over like 47 like and a half that. team yeah. total. Who are they playing? Rice. Yeah. It's a class. They play every year. Don't yeah. They? I think so. Two Texas schools. Yeah. yeah. Um, good pick. Let's throw it to Trev for his pick. We need to talk about last week's boys down bad parlay. One for four. Hand up. Just not our best work. Uh, Navy really let me down. I trusted the troops. Wasn't even close. We'll learn from it. It was week zero. Zero's not even really a number. So uh, we're going to get it back. And it all starts with Hawaii versus Stanford. Under 60. Uh, Stanford's never really been a high-scoring team. David Shaw's gone. Brand new coaching staff. Hawaii's not your most explosive team either. I just think 60 is way too much, especially with the new scoring or uh, clock system in college football. Unders were hot in week zero. We're going to keep riding them. Hawaii, Stanford, under 60. Book it. All right, I'm going with Texas Tech minus 14 at Wyoming. Look out for Texas Tech this year. I think they're going to be really good. They have a shot to win the Big 12. I think their quarterback, Tyler Shuck, um, starting for his third straight year. However, he's only started and finished eight games for Texas Tech in three years because he gets hurt every year. If he stays healthy, he is 8-0 in games that he started for Texas Tech. So I think Texas Tech is going to be really good this year, and they're going to pound Wyoming. Yeah, I don't think Wyoming's very good. Mm, can't imagine. They're no. usually slow and... Unless they have Josh Allen, but I think he's gone. Yeah. I think he is gone. Yeah. All right. This parlay is going to be better. This is not. Right. This is not gambling advice. This is just our picks. Yeah. I saw some comment about taking legal action. <laughs> not gambling. Not financial advice. I put in our bio. I said gamble responsibly. Yeah. Smart. Because you should gamble responsibly if you're going to do it. Yeah. But I would this week. But I would do it. definitely gonna, do it this week. Because this one's gonna this one's gonna hit. <laughs> yeah. Responsibly, so, of course. Yes. yes. But I would of course. I mean I yeah. Hypothetically I would. Yeah. Hypothetically I, I would. would do it. But please fade and you'll Yeah, and fade then if you'll you lose. want. And fade if lose. you want and see what happens. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. But if you're, if you're gonna fade, I expect you to fade all five. Don't take them separate. Yeah. 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 If you're if you say you're gonna fade, I wanna see five opposite picks four. show me the ticket four four four, four opposite picks show me the yeah. ticket yeah all right good picks boys let's do a quick immaculate grid immaculate grid time we got it pulled up we yes good? five Timer? minutes good five, five minutes. minutes should we do six minutes uh, only... yeah we only have three let's do yeah, six let's yeah. do six yep all right all three right. two one um diamondbacks guardians is trevor bauer trevor and then Guardians, okay. Gold Glove, Francisco Lindor. Yeah, I think he's I would think so. One. And then Cy Young, I would say Shane Bieber. Shane Bieber, for yep. sure. Okay. Uh, Cy Young for the Tigers has got to be Verlander. It has yeah. To, yeah, Verlander. Gold Glove for. Oh no. Oops. There we go. Okay. All right. Gold four Glove for four. For Oakland would be Ricky Henderson. Yeah, probably. Maybe. Him or Matt Chapman. I have no idea. Yeah. I, I know he's a good I hitter. It, I don't know how he does. I think either one would probably do we it. We can go Henderson. I'm going to be pissed if Henderson. <laughs> yeah, Henderson was good. <sighs> okay. So what, what do we need left? Uh, Tigers and Diamondbacks. A's and Diamondbacks. Uh, Tigers, Diamondbacks would be an Upton, right? Justin Upton? I think one of them Didn't, did play for both. Not BJ. I think Justin. I think Justin did. We can hang both. on to it if we're not sure. I'm pretty sure he did, though. I know he played for the Diamondbacks. Okay, I know he played for the Tigers. Okay. Yeah. Yes. What's the percentage on that? 12. 
gold glove for the Tigers. Did Miguel Cabrera ever win a gold glove? I don't he think. probably sucks on defense. They've got to have like an outfielder. Yeah. Baez? I don't think Baez won one for the Tigers. Though. Yeah, but for the Cubs? I think gold yeah, glove. Yeah, I think they have to win it on the team. Oh, for they like, do? For yeah. gold glove and Cy Young, I think okay. they do. Do we know an A is Cy Young? <laughs> uh, the first name that came to my head was like Raleigh Fingers, but I don't. <laughs> that's a that's a shot out of left field. <laughs> what a pull! There, there's an A's I mean, I've heard guy. the name, but there's an A's a really good A's pitcher that he was on one of the last Immaculate Grids, and I can't remember his name. So we need Oakland and Diamondbacks. Yes. Oakland, Cy Young, and then Detroit Gold Glove. We got three and a half minutes. We got time Would to Curtis think. Granderson have won a Gold Glove in Detroit? Ooh, maybe. That's who I was thinking of. I was thinking of an outfielder. That's the only name that I can think of. He went of. in Detroit. I know we played in Detroit. Yeah, I, I know. He know. played in Detroit, but did he win a Gold Glove? That's a, that's one to hang on to. And then it. Oakland A's and Diamondbacks person. God, the A's have been bad. Granky never played for the A's, did he? No. No. Oh, man. That section's just gross. The Diamondbacks is gross. The A's is gross. Yeah, that's classic. They put those together. <laughs> um, let's Are we at seven or six? Six. We have three guesses left. 2.30. So we got plenty of time. So we gold glove for Tiger. I th- think I like Gray Anderson. I, I can't think of another Tiger. Or, cause I don't or think Miguel Cabrera. Any catchers? Does they have oh, any catcher? Um, uh, Rodriguez. Pudge? Pudge, Pudge Rodriguez. Ivan Rodriguez. He, he definitely played. F- he played from. I think he yeah. was better with the Rangers, but let's try that. Rodriguez. Yeah, okay. over Granderson. I think so. I mean, he was better at his position than Granderson. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ivan Rodriguez. Yes. <laughs> let's go. Twenty-one percent. Seven. So we're okay. at seven. I, there's an A's pitcher. Did Dallas Braden play for the Diamondbacks. Kemp play for the Diamondbacks? Matt Kemp? Tony Kemp. Oh, Tony Kemp. A little small guy. I Didn't he know. play for the Royals? Sounds Tony right. Tony Kemp. He's fast. I'm trying to think of guys that have bounced around. Cespedes didn't... Ah, did Cespedes play for the Diamondbacks? I don't think so. He played for so. the Mets. Yeah, he didn't play for the... How much time? A minute 20. <sighs> So we need a Cy Young. What's that guy's name? Oh, Raleigh uh, Fingers. Where did that come from? <laughs> That's the first name that comes to my head when I see the athletics. Other than Ricky Henderson, but I know he didn't win a Cy Young. Did Did Scherzer play for the Tigers? Well, we don't need a Tigers anymore. Tigers Diamondbacks? No, that was Upton. Oh yeah. Okay. Need A's A's Diamondbacks. Dallas Braden didn't win a Cy Young, did he? I don't think so. I don't think so. He just had a perfect game. Yeah. Oh. Dylan's going to look this up right after and be pissed at himself. 30 seconds. What do you, who, do you have like any guesses? No. I I just know that I know, I'd know it when I saw it. Do you want to go fingers? There's no <laughs> way that's right, but I mean, do we have any other no, guesses? I, d- I wouldn't no. have another guess. I don't think it's probably right. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> Five. We have A's and four. Do Cespedes or someone? I don't know. Yeah, just try Cespedes. I don't think he played for the Diamondbacks, but no, he did not. Seven. Seven. Seven with three people is not bad. Not bad. Let me see. Go to the show summary. Barry Zito for gold. Yes, that's who it was. Or uh, Cy Young. Yes. All right, I've Barry's, heard the name. I always forgot that he played for the what A's. What about A's Diamondbacks? Eric 
Burns, B Y R N E S. Yeah, I remember Eric Burns. Wouldn't have got there. Wouldn't have got it, but yeah. All right. Well, seven's not bad. Seven's not bad for having yeah. it's three people. All right, good pod boys. We got football this week. Go Skurs, baby. We waited a long time for this. It's Matt exciting. Roller off to a start. Matt Rule. Let's let's see what we got. Yeah. Let's just see. Yep. We're excited. Volleyball on Wednesday. It's yep. gonna be awesome. Volleyball day in Nebraska was cool. Yep. Ninety thousand there for a volleyball game. Yep. Sweet. All right. This is the Boys Never Bad Podcast. I'm Dylan. Peters. I'm Chris. Have yourselves a top ten weekend.